Imagine that you are completely paralyzed, trapped inside your body. You cannot move at all. You want to move your arms, but you can't, no matter how hard you try. You try to move your legs, but you are stuck in the same place. Imagine the desperation. You want to cry out for help, but not a sound comes out. You feel like you are drowning in desperation. Imagine the anxiety. Imagine the anxiety. Hi, my name is Kati, and I have LIS, locked in syndrome. I had a massive lower brain stroke in 1995, and I have been almost entirely paralyzed since. Trust me when I say to you that, locked down is not nearly as bad as locked in. At first, after the stroke, the doctors and nurses thought that I was in shock and that I could not understand what was going on. It was my mother that noticed that I was still conscious and that I could move my eyes. She started to communicate with me by asking me questions, and she told me to blink once for yes and twice for no. By blinking, they could communicate with me. However, I still could not communicate with them. A few days after the stroke, the speech therapist came by with a see-through plexiglass letter board. It is called Air Alphabet. The person talking to me would keep the board up between their face and mine. I would look at a letter, and they would say it out loud. In this way, we spell out the words and forming the sentences. I could communicate again. You cannot imagine how that felt like. Before the board, I was nothing more than a blinking vegetable. With a low-tech system, I became a person again. The therapists at the rehab center noticed that I could move my neck a little. With therapy, they managed to improve my neck movements. And after this happened, they brought me a computer to use. The computer had an infrared camera above the monitor and software as Grid, Dragger, and Weavik. They put a reflecting mouse on my forehead and before I knew it, I was surfing the internet even though I was entirely paralyzed. By being able to use a computer, I could keep in contact with my family and friends. On the computer, I could indeed be myself. Being in my condition, I need assistance to do everything for me, even the most embarrassing things that a five-year-old can do by herself. However, on the computer, I can do everything by myself. In real life, I am utterly dependable on others, while on the computer, I am completely independent. Beside of giving me my independence and self-esteem back, the ability to write down my thoughts and emotions was a form of therapy for me. Through that machine, I began to live again. It made me feel like a normal person. I started to make new friends and to travel.
I wrote my first book, and I met Professor McJohn again and encountered Kagane. Even more, through the computer, I found true love and got married. Yes, I met him on the internet, and we have been married since December 2012. In 2013 my husband Henning and I started on a new mission which was to help and empower others that may be in a similar situation as I am. We started doing so by writing blogs that we would publish on my website. As this grew, I received the Finnish JCI Young Achiever Award 2014. We were asked to write blogs and articles for many different internet websites and magazines such as the Finnish Patient Doctor magazine and the Huffington Post, UK. We were invited to be part of different platforms such as giving a TED Talk, participating at the New Scientist Festival in London, being a contestant in the first ever Miss Wheelchair World in Warsaw, and making a documentary about communication systems which led me to my own personal voice which is what you hear right now. I never in my wildest dreams imagined being able to do so much while being in a state of total locked in. Becoming a certified accessibility consultant, board member of Kagane, and an ambassador for Special Effect, UK. Nothing of this could have been possible if not for the technology that people like you make. I still use the air alphabet as the primary means of communication and the infrared system on my main computer. However, I also use a tablet with the Toby Eye Gaze system on it. I use the tablet when traveling and with friends that do not know the air alphabet. I also use the device as a remote control to my TV and to play computer games. In 2019 I published my second book, Living Underwater, and I have been trying out the special effect video games checking for bugs. As all board members of Kagane present and past, we try to do our part in technologies to help the less fortunate. We do so on ourselves but also in an organization like this. One thing that I came to notice in my over 25 years of disability is that there are two kinds of people in the field of helping the less abled, the ones that are in contact with the patients and the ones that are not. It is quite often that the ones that are not in contact with the users cannot provide the right systems simply because they do not understand the problem from up close. I will plead to you all to at least from time to time to meet the users of your technology. People that are using the systems and the ones who achieved something by using the technology. And, of course, also the ones that need such systems. Remember, you may be creating technologies, but what you are actually doing is saving our humanity. As you may have noticed, my talk was not so much about the systems, but more about what can be reached through technology. My goal through this video was to show you how important your work is and what a difference it can make. Thank you for watching. Maybe next time we will meet in person. One last word. Keep on the good work.